Why hello YouTube. Welcome back again. This is Baylor Mage and I am bringing you some Atlas strategies. A few of the starter Atlas strategies. Uh, I got a few things to go over. Uh, for starters, there are only eight here right now, but there is a Google Doc with all of them linked in it that will be linked in the description. And any more we come across or any fine tuning we find to any of the eight that already exist will be updated in the Google Doc as we do it. So do remember to keep checking that and if you plan on using one grab it from the google doc the the day of league launch instead of like right now because there could be updates to it in the week leading up to league we could find slightly better ways to do it or we could find new options and put them in the google doc also for anybody who likes to just grab the google doc and run i would implore you to look at the first two builds in this video and understand why before abandoning it uh, if you if you already know quite a bit about what you're doing and you just want to pull the trees uh, stick around for the first two and and then bugger off after that because all of them will be in the description if you already know what's up so getting right into it the reason that the first two are important is because i am calling them progression trees this is something that i think is really important for everybody to understand is that the new i guess like meta or way to do things now because of the introduction in necropolis league of multiple atlas trees is to build your first tree the only thing that matters is progression the only thing that matters is progression you do not worry about respects you do not worry about like what mechanics am i going to want to do what's this what's that nothing matters because and this is a small leap in assumption we are assuming that at least by the time you have your first two watchstones, we will have access to at least the second tree and it will be blank and you will be able to just swap straight into that second one when you feel as if you're done with progression and set yourself up a tree however you like. At some point, we will also unlock a third one. I assume that will be somewhat towards the end. I'm really hoping it's either a Shaper or Sierra skill, non-Ubers, just the Shaper or Sierra skill, because I feel like that would be really nice thematically for the third tree. But we don't know how those are done yet, at least as of recording this video, but there'll be a third tree and they definitely want them to be accessible to all people, including casuals. So I don't think it'll be Ubers or like anything incredibly difficult, which means when you're done with your second tree, which is your first end game one, you'll still have a third one to set up with a new strategy. And it won't be until you do your fourth different Atlas tree that you will need Atlas respects to get rid of your first progression tree. So. With that in mind, I have two ideas for progression trees. There is this one, which I think is going to be the one I'm doing, which looks a little bit weird. And we've also come up here and taken unwavering. So I will explain what is happening. This will be a little bit of a running thing. Uh, there is no more wandering path. So progression will not be quite as easy as it was. So my thoughts are straight up the middle. Take this whole Kirak wheel. I want all these missions, right? I'm going to take these three because I want these plus Atlas nodes. Then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to beeline straight to here. Unwavering vision. This will stop every scarab from dropping. There's a reason I'm using this in a progression tree and not in any real tree at all because I think scarabs are going to be far too important to build a real Atlas strategy around having this node. That downside is not worth 20 points in my mind. Uh, we're not going to really know how important Scarabs are to our overall currency until we actually play the league. But my best guess is they're pretty goddamn important. But as a progression tree, getting to here relatively quickly frees up a lot of extra points for us. Um, these will actually be the last points I put in, so I might even just take them out. Those will be the last points I put in. As soon as I get here, what I'm going to do from there is branch out this way and grab our plus atlas, uh, our plus progression nodes. Branch out this way and grab our plus level progression nodes. And now I will have three of the plus nodes and all these Kirak nodes in the middle. And then... I'm going to run over here 
and I'm going to grab Pact with Energy. You'll see this in quite a few of our trees this league. Uh, we can very easily get 100% chance for Nico in our maps. Packed with energy means for each sulfite vein I pick up in my map, I will get plus one max res, 35% increased damage, and most importantly, 15% movement speed. So that is 45% movement speed, 105% increased damage, and three max res. For our day one or early mapping progression, wherever that might be for you, that is a lot of power to give us. That is going to speed, that's going to make things so much more comfortable, speed us up so much more. I don't actually care about delving. I don't care if I'm going to cap my sulfite. I'm never going to use it. It's just there to give me buffs and make me speedy. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to take these ones for the more chance to contain. I'm going to take these two travel nodes, grab these chance to contain. I've taken this node in all of the trees that have this setup because I assume doomed spirits will be worth it. We have no idea what boom, doomed spirits are. If they end up being trashed, just don't take that node. We still need to travel here. We need, still need those 8% chances anyway, so it'll just be one point off, right? The next thing I do, jump down here, grab these three for a buttload more chance, and then grab these to cap it. That's it. The whole, that is capped. That is 100% chance you will have sulfite veins in every single map from then on. Then I will start filling out these ones over here to grab more connected maps, grab our Kirak wheel, more connected maps, grab our Kirak wheel, and then fill out every other connected map node that I can find on the entire tree. We don't really care how this tree looks. We don't really care that it's not efficient for making money end game. The only thing about this is progression. If I get more points at that point and I'm still on the progression tree in order to speed myself up further, and add extra packs to my map. I will take the shrine nodes because shrines is just extra packs and quite often they're acceleration shrines and they go quite quick. And if you end up with an acceleration shrine and all of the packed with energy stuff, you're gonna be absolutely blasting through. So this is probably the one I'm going with. That's tree number one. I'm calling it progression tree, no scarab drops because it is ruining our scarab drops. We are going to want to finish progression and change off this tree into the secondary one as quick as we can because we want to get scarabs dropping again. However, if you don't like the idea of blocking scarabs, here is a second one. This is the one that I think will appeal to more people. It's also only 64 points. We've kept this really low because it's got a lot of breathing room for you to pick whatever you want to do after this. I'll throw out a few suggestions, but for now, this is the same idea. We would still come straight up the middle. We would still grab this whole Kirak wheel, except this node because I don't need it. This is a worthless node to me. If you really like it, you can take it, whatever. Uh, we're going to grab these three and then over to shaping, over to shaping, down to Kirak, down to Kirak, and then fill in all of the rest of the connected nodes and then take these other plus ones. And now we're at 64. Uh, I also quite like this scarab wheel. If we're not blocking scarabs, it's great. So I would take that. From here, you can put in whatever you want. Just be aware it's all about trying to progress, trying to move faster and trying to guarantee that you're getting map drops. So we want to do things like contain an additional shrine or perhaps strong boxes or progress up to grab packed with energy and all of the Nico things. So you can do that same speed thing or grab more strong boxes or things like that. We do not want to do things like smugglers cash or really even essences or tormented spirits or anything like that or ultimatums. These can all be things that you do later on with your secondary tree, but not with your progression tree. Progression tree, just like adding an essence to your map is one rare mob. Yes, you might use the essences to craft something, but you're probably not going to. Not during the first 60 to 80 maps during super early progression. As soon as we unlock our secondary tree, you can change into whatever tree you want. This one is just all about progression. Progress fast, get map returns. That's the goal. All right. That's the important things. So if anybody wants to dip out now, now's the time. You will find links to every single PoE planner that we have planned 
in the Google Doc below. Moving on, these are all secondary, second day trees, I'm calling them. Realistically, I'll find, I should find a different name. These are for after we're done with progression. This doesn't mean I've got all my points. This probably means I've got something around 100, 110. I've done most of the maps on my Atlas and it's for me midday two and I need to change into something where I'm making money. I need to change into something where I'm investing in a mechanic. So I have several here. The first one is essences, red beasts and scarab farms. You may have noticed that the essences got quite heavily nerfed, especially you can't really realistically farm them on tier ones anymore. However, you can still farm decent essences as far as we know on tier six. So you can grab, you can do all the progression, get your two watchstones and get about a hundred completion and then just sit in tier sixes and still farm essences and red beasts, just like any other league. Excuse me. So the other point that I will make is, uh, I'm not 100% sure whether this node will be good or not. I really don't fully understand the implications of this one. So we've taken it because we would take the wheel here anyway, but it may not be worth it. I'm really not sure. Um, otherwise this is a pretty standard thing. All we've done is add a little bit of a uh, farm scarabs while you're here. So we've got some increased scarab drops and we've got up here scarabs found in your map are more likely to be less common. And then we've got the uh, final map bosses give you 25% chance to drop an additional scarab because these are relatively quick maps, low tier farming. These should be pretty good for anyone who's struggling to stay in high tier maps, wants to relax in lower tier stuff. This will be, this will be the, almost the same farm as you were doing in tier one maps last time. You just have to be in tier six maps now. Frankly, tier six map essences, still fine. This is not the same as being in tier 16 maps. This is still going to be quite easy. Pretty relatively easy to maintain. I haven't gone out of my way to get extra shaping nodes or anything, just the ones we were really close to. Should be very comfortable. I am overall pretty happy with that. Right, moving on the next one. Breaches slash blue altars slash Nico slash Necropolis all at once. So the only two normal mechanics that we're farming here are Chalupa breaches with 100% chance to spawn breaches. So we'll have breaches in every map. Presumably we'll be using some breach scarabs to further influence that. We also have blue altars just like normal. Uh, it is worth noting anything with an altar in it. Sh altar farming should now take these back nodes. They are new, 5% increased pack size per node. So there's 20% increased pack size across the back there. So those are the same as these nodes, which we always took. So we're always going to take those. We have put Nico packed with energy into this strategy as well. So we have a buttload of extra damage and movement speed. It's great. I even went out over here and picked up these extra ones. And the remainder of my investment has gone into the league mechanic. We've got some necropolis nodes up here. We have uh, gated over to this side, taken those, taken this whole wheel, but definitely not this notable. Um, this whole wheel isn't actually the play. Um, we want to take one side or the other. So these are 10% increased effect of whatever this haunted thing is which should make it more difficult and more rewarding. These ones are 20% reduced effect. So this should make it easier, but slightly less rewarding. You want to pick a side. You don't want to take both sides. You want to pick a side. Do you need it to be a little easier or are you super strong now and you want it to be a bit more difficult? So pick a side there. Otherwise, this necropolis stuff is going to be a pretty big question mark. Um, not question mark as to whether or not they're good nodes, but question mark as to whether or not any of them are financially worth taking. I'll be doing a lot of playing with them. I'll be doing a lot of testing. I'll be specking into them, but who knows whether they'll be worth it or not until we start messing with it. 
no one knows that being said if any of these wheels end up not worth it very easy to pull them out just pull back to here and drop that wheel you can just drop this wheel as it goes this wheel is just gated to so all pretty convenient all pretty good however if you're not interested in taking risks you don't want to mess around with the new stuff until somebody smarter than me figures it out uh here is a pretty standard no necropolis blue altar and legion farm you're just going to be leveling a tornado shot or a super clear speed build and you just want a super super clear path to make money where you don't risk anything you don't mess around with stuff you don't know about you just start you farm the things that you know make money you use them to invest into your character you get yourself your favorite belt and then you figure out what the meta is and what people are playing and what specs you want to use this is going to be a pretty decent go-to it's investing in exactly two mechanics which is just legion blue altars these are going to be very simple you're going to use legion scarabs whichever legion scarabs are the best that you can get hold of uh you're going to put legion i don't i don't even remember if it's on the map device anymore i think it is i should have looked that up beforehand oh i should definitely take these two nodes out we actually don't want generals that's my bad just hit save on that real quick right this is how that tree is going to look very simple in my opinion a little bit boring because we're not experimenting with any new stuff um also we'll have to keep an eye on what we've blocked here because while i think these are the right things to block and that it is worth blocking it will not be worth blocking if they are suddenly a bunch of scarabs worth money so it could be the sacred grove scarabs end up being worth a ton well if the scarabs are worth a ton you're going to want to unblock it if my expedition scarabs are worth a ton you're going to want to unblock it All right so this is going to be up to how the league develops it is the only like risky bit but it's not really a risky bit right you just, as soon as we notice the prices of scarabs are too high in certain mechanics we just unblock them so that we can get those as well that's it uh, moving on the next one is a harvest slash logbook farmer this is also pretty standard the idea of this one is literally just uh we're going to get a little bit of jun for crafting we've got a lot of crafting stuff here and then uh oh this one's mislabeled sorry i changed my mind on this one i need to retype that out this is not a logbook farmer this is the harvest slash jun for all of your crafting needs except not expedition so this one was pretty good i'm actually pretty interested in this one and i know a few people were going to run this this is exactly what it looks like it's just a lot of harvest juice and a lot of jun with the packed with energy strat and that's the whole thing that's all there is there is blue altars snuck into it because it was there but otherwise you're just going to be farming a lot of katarinas a lot of unveils and a lot of harvest juice i suspect harvest juice is going to be more expensive than normal especially with all the extra swaps that are in and there's a pretty heavy suspicion that betrayal is going to be really 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 worth running which is why we've got ourselves a betrayal and harvest tree oh <sighs> okay moving on the next one here you go so this one was a little bit interesting this is a boss rush destructive play and logbook farmer that's where the logbooks came from so this one is going to be a little bit interesting we're going to have a lot of scarabs and a lot of logbooks to sell and a lot of conqueror maps shaper maps and synth maps to sell pretty standard idea with the destructive play boss rushing same as bef same as the the previous atlas um, the only slight differences here is we have invested in intelligence gathering only because again we expect katarinas to be worth a pretty good amount of money and this is pretty free when you're already pardoned there but 
we've also got our packed with energy stuff and we're also doing 100 spawn chance on the expedition you'll have an expedition on every single map uh one big question is whether or not we use the big explode node technically speaking your returns per expedition are better if you don't use this node and you individually pick where you're going and have them all in a chain perfectly and you avoid stuff i can promise you that if i'm doing this strat if i pick it uh i'm gonna i'm gonna take this big explode node uh, there's absolutely no shot that i don't do the explode node um i can't handle sitting there and planning it out myself but nothing about that changes the tree so that's personal preference um otherwise packed with energy the whole quant wheel because why not we've got the points for it you probably take this quant stuff the this quant wheel here and this center bit last it's the least important while doing a destructive play atlas but otherwise chance for bosses to drop maps chance for bosses to drop map chance for bosses to drop map chance for extra bosses well guaranteed extra bosses and then over here final map dross has a chance to drop scarabs and scarabs in your map are more likely to be less common varieties should give us a pretty good amount of scarabs uh, the one thing worth noting on this tree is this node here is a little bit of a question there are, if there are fewer than 50 boss uh, monsters remaining in your map the final map bosses will be empowered with wildwood wisps now we all know how strong wildwood wisps were how could they were for returns currency everything especially when they were on unique mobs i know the default was to farm abyss spires because you got like 50 rares instead but they were really really good on unique mobs as well Two problems with this one we do not know how much juice they put on it they could put on so much wildwood juice that fighting literally four map bosses with wildwood juice could become very dangerous we have no idea but also destructive play encourages you to clear the map now the number of additional bosses summoned in is higher if there are fewer monsters remaining in the map I don't know what the numbers are like on that it could be that it always summons three as long as you've cleared half the map if that's the case we don't want this because we don't want to have to clear more but if it ends up working out that we are full clearing maps now to do destructive play then as long as your build can handle it this will be a fantastic node to add in but it is big question marks the good news is regardless our tree looks the same so it doesn't matter it'll just be one point we take or one point we don't take that's that's it and then last but not least the one i'm probably gonna do unless i change my mind in the next week like i will because i change my mind 800 times before league start but this is the one i'm looking at right now which is blue altars legion and breach farming at the same time with some investment into the necropolis points so i don't have packed with energy in here because i expect that by the time i get to this point i will have enough power to not need it and we've gone for all the breach nodes all the legion nodes a little bit of map sustain and the wheels that we could get to for necropolis and that was it so we're uh we're here farming chalupa it is worth noting if you follow this tree as well we're definitely going to start with this node and it may be worth having these as well however i plan on not having either of these two nodes at the very least as soon as i can you almost always want to start with this especially when your character is weak legion encounters in your map have 40 percent increased duration and monsters take 50 percent damage while they're in stasis if you change into this early enough that it's a little bit harder to clear the full area you want to take this node but as we get more powerful we'll need it less and less we'll get rid of them both so what else we got chalupa breach nodes here little bit of map sustain blue altars like always taking the top of the blue altar part all of our standard breach and legion nodes and we get this necropolis wheel as well with our tier higher crafting outcome and meta mod crafting outcomes 
this is all experimental i do not know whether or they will be good or not at this point and i don't know whether i will enjoy them or not at this point so just keep those ones in mind that's all the trees i have for now um take inspiration from any of them copy any you like come up with your own there's so many things to do this league i'm so excited remember the google doc will get updated with more if we come across more or if they get fine-tuned it'll get updated so that is enough. I hope everybody enjoyed it and I will see everybody later. Goodbye.